Hello, and welcome back to another episode of 8-Bit Monsters Monster Deconstruction for D&D 5th Edition. On today's episode, we're going to be taking a look at the Grey Ooze. We'll also be looking at the variant, uh, which is a Psychic Grey Ooze as well. The Grey Ooze is a CR 1 half, and it's worth 100 XP. Looking over the Grey Ooze's stats, we see that the Grey Ooze has no armor, and a very low deck score, resulting in a negative 2, which will actually drop our Grey Ooze down to the 8, which we see for its AC. Already looking at this 8, we know that the AC is actually below average, and will result in being able to get hit more often. If you've been following along with the channel, you'll know that this will probably result in the Grey Ooze having a very high attack, since the armor class is already so low. When we look at Xanathar's guide for encounter building, we'll see that when we take a CR 1 half and pit it up against level 1 PCs, it'll take three of them to actually fight him off. Now, with last week's episode, I actually got a little confused and stated some incorrect information. Well, this time I'm actually stating it correctly, and at levels 2 and 3 for our player characters, they can actually fend off uh, a Grey Ooze on a 1 to 1 basis. Although at level 2, probably more, something more like one and a half players to a CR one half Grey Ooze. You know, we don't really have one and a half levels, but that's just my idea. Moving on, we'll take a look at the skills and traits next to see that the Grey Ooze only has stealth for its skills. The stealth is actually a plus two even with the minus two dex proficiency. That leads me to believe that the Grey Ooze not only has proficiency in stealth, but is also an expert. We'll see a little bit of that in the trait section as well. Some things to note here is the damage resistance. The Grey Ooze actually has resistance to acid, cold, and fire, but due to the rules for constructing a custom monster, you only really need to take into consideration damage resistances to very common attack types. So this is going to include piercing, bludgeoning, and slashing because those are generally the most common damage types. Now, we could consider fire to be somewhat common because generally most wizards, sorcerers, and maybe even warlocks will have some kind of a fire cantrip that they can use repeatedly, but that's only usually one or two members of a party as compared to the entire group that may have a whole bunch of melee users. We continue on to see that the Great Ooze also has condition immunities, which is the first monster we've looked at so far. This actually doesn't take any kind of effect to the, the monster whatsoever when we build out its CR, so luckily, even though it has a whole bunch of condition immunities, we can actually disregard them. Now let's take a look at the traits. The Grey Ooze actually has three traits, Amorphous, Corrode Metal, and False Appearance. When we look at the monster traits in the Dungeon Master's Guide, we find that all of these traits actually have no effect on the monster. The one thing to note though is Corrode Metal, which is going to be a nightmare for lower level players, especially because if the armor and weapons are not magical, with every hit then, the weapons and armor will be destroyed over time. The funny thing is that over time, the damage will destroy the armor and weapons depending on how strong the, uh, the equipment is. Now that we've looked over the skills and traits to find that there's no real modifications needing to be made to our monster, let's just jump right into the defensive combat rating. Looking at our DCR here, we'll see that our Grey Ooze has an average hit points of 22, and since there's nothing affecting the hit points, this is our effective HP. And when we take a look at our chart, we'll see that 22 hit points puts us in the range of CR 1 8 again. A lot of our low-level monsters are going to have generally 1 8 CR rating for hit points, it seems. Now that we've established the effective HP, let's take a look at the armor class. The Great Ooze has an actual armor class of 8. We give it the rating of 10, and then we take a look at the modifier for dex. And since our Great Ooze actually has a negative dex modifier, it gets dropped down from 10 to 8. Now when we take a look at the chart, we'll see that a CR 1 8 uh, monster defensively is expected to have a 13 AC. Because the Grey Ooze actually has an armor class of 8, this is a negative 5 under the expected rating. So this is actually going to be a big drop. Again, the rules state for every 2 points of AC that is lower than the expected rating, we'll shift the uh, CR rating down or up one. 
we would actually have to shift the gray ooze down two ratings. But because the gray ooze is already starting at a CR 1 8 for its defenses, it can only shift down to a zero. Because the gray ooze has such a horrible AC, we could actually increase the, hit, the average hit points of this gray ooze up to roughly 49 and still not affect the overall CR that is printed for this gray ooze. Which, if we were to look at 49 and come back to the chart, we'll see that 49 average hit points is the top rate you can get for a CR 1 quarter. And because the effective AC is an 8, we would shift that CR 1 quarter down two rankings to CR 0 and still be fine. Now that we've looked at the effective AC and found that we had to shift our actual uh, DCR rating down from 1 8 to 0, we now know that our Great Ooze actually has a DCR of 0. This is a first for all the monsters we've looked at so far and should be taken into consideration of how dangerous this monster could potentially be. Now let's take a look at the OCR. Our Great Ooze only has one attack, unless we're looking at the variant, but I'll take a look at the variant in a moment. The only attack that our normal Great Ooze has is Pseudopod, and this does an average of 4 damage from its 1d6 plus 1 uh, die roll. On top of that, the Great Ooze gets bonus damage of 7, resulting from the 2d6 acid damage that it gets from being a very acoustic pile of ooze. Again, if the Pseudopod actually is able to hit anyone with an attack, any non-magical armor is going to take a negative 1 penalty to the total AC per hit. So every time this Great Ooze is hitting, it's dealing that target minus 1 AC on top of doing damage. But because this is doing damage, to the target's armor class, we don't have to take this into effect for its overall CR rating, funny enough. Now, the variant of the Great Ooze is the Psychic Great Ooze, which comes with a Psychic Crush. The thing is, is that Psychic Crush recharges every turn on a 5 or 6 D6 roll. If the Great Ooze isn't able to recharge its Psychic Crush, then it's not going to be able to do this damage over and over again. But because we're looking at the perfect conditions and considering this Great Ooze to constantly get this uh, Psychic Crush back every time, we would see that the target would have to make a DC 10 Intelligence save, or be dealt 10 average damage resulting from 3d6 dice, or half on a success. The target is going to be taking either 10 average or 5 average uh, points of damage. Now, with such a low DC uh, save, there's a good chance that most targets are going to succeed against such a low DC. So we have two different variables of damage here. We have four bludgeoning damage and our seven acid damage, resulting in a total of technically 12 points of damage because of those half dice that we found earlier. Or we could have 10 and a half average damage from the second crush. Considering the melee version, with a total of 12 actual damage coming from the pseudopod, this puts us in the CR1 range. Remember, I warned you about this. Because the Grey Ooze had such a low DCR, resulting in a zero, the damage overall was going to be pretty high. Although if you look at the CR rating of one half, an OCR of one isn't too terribly high, comparatively. But still, with all of its extra damage that it does to non-magical armor and, and equipment, it's still a pretty rough monster to be dealing with at lower levels. It's an OCR of one. You know, a level one player can't even tango with one of these Grey Oozes in one shot. Uh, moving on, if we were to look at the Psychic Crush damage on our chart, we would see that this nets us a 10 and also puts us in the CR1 range. But that doesn't take into effect the DC, which we haven't looked at yet, and this will be a first for the channel as well. Let's take a look now at the attack bonus and the difficulty check for both of the monster's attacks. Now, the Grey Ooze's pseudopod comes with a plus three attack bonus, and at CR1, this is an expected attack bonus. So because there's no difference between the actual attack bonus and the expected attack bonus, we don't shift it whatsoever. So the pseudopod attack and a non-psychic gray ooze has an OCR of 1. Now if we were to look at the variance damage, and instead of looking at the attack bonus, we instead look at the save DC, 
the Psychic Crush is expected to have a DC of 13. It actually has a DC of 10. This is actually considerably low for a Psychic Attack at a difference of minus 3. And because it's in multiples of 2, we have a downshift of 1. So even though our Psychic Crush is an OCR of 1, because of that low DC check, we actually have to shift its rating from OCR 1 to OCR 1 half. Now that we've established the OCR of 1 or 1 half, depending on if you're using the variant or not, let's finish this off and take a look at the final combat rating. For our regular Great Ooze, we start with a DCR of 0. We then add to it the OCR of 1, which equals a 1, and then we divide that in half for averaging and we find that the final CR for our gray ooze is a CR 1 half. Perfect, we have the printed value again. But the problem is, is that the DCR is a zero and the OCR is a one. So again, we have a monster hitting harder than is expected, but has much lower hit points than is expected. So we have this scaling flip-flop again. If we take a look at the variant psychic gray ooze, we'll see that the DCR is zero, we add it to an OCR of one half that we found, add those together, we get a one half, and then divide that in half, and we end up with a CR of one quarter. So here we go with the variant, which is an overrated psychic gray ooze. But that's only if the gray ooze is constantly doing psychic attacks, which it could use for ranged attacks until the players figure out, oh, it's coming from this pile of slime, let's kill it. With the final combat ratings found at one half or one quarter, let's take a look at some notes I have about what's going on here. The first note I have is about its DCR rating, a zero. <laughs> Man, that is really low. That's the lowest we've found so far. And considering how badly the Great Ooze can damage players' equipment, it's no wonder that this thing can be taken out in probably one or two rounds of combat. So because of that, we have a Grey Ooze, both psychically or physically, with an incredibly low DCR rating. The next note is, again, that our Grey Oozes can be hitting as hard as a CR1 monster. That's, ah, that, every time this kills me. Every time we see these ratings, it drives me up the wall because we have these hell levels because our players are more than likely running in the same problem where they have high OCRs but extremely low DCRs. Except for the uh, occasional crazy, you know, fighter that has an AC of 18 or a paladin or a cleric, we've got these insane shifts. They, these aren't very balanced. Note number three is how the, uh, the Great Ooze destroys armor and weapons. For hell levels, this makes life extremely difficult because most players aren't going to have all the different types of damage to go against like, oh, skeletons, oh, we got a skeleton here. It's resistant to slashing and piercing, but takes double damage to bludgeoning. And finally, my last note is about the variant Psychic Grey Ooze dealing less damage based on the low DC, the low DC check. It's got a DC of 10, and that's with the increased intelligence that comes from the variant rules still resulting in a minus two for the intelligence saves and whatnot. Again, this gray ooze is fun for a little bit of time, but overall I wouldn't bank on this being, you know, a party killer, but could be a party annoyer. And with that, I hope you've enjoyed another episode of 8-Bit Monsters Monster Deconstruction for D&D 5th Edition. Until next time, when we deconstruct another monster from D&D 5th Edition, Take care, everyone, and I'll see you next time.